What's up, everybody? This is King L. Bay. I'm going to drop this science on y'all so y'all understand this information and why I said I'm we'll talk about contracts and the importance of your contracts. Have you ever really understood really why you got two birth certificates? Most of y'all don't know you got two birth certificates. So this is the certificate of live birth. As you can see, it has your name on there, it has everything. It's just a certificate of live birth. Certificate, anybody can go get it. Now, you turn on the other hand, you have a birth a certificate of birth. Now, it's the same thing, and it says state register of, of vital statistics. So Looking at this, you got a certificate of birth, and then you have a certificate of live birth. Why do you need two birth certificates, or why why are they why are they done like this? You have to ask yourself. Most of y'all don't understand. You already got the evidence in your hand. You just don't know how to use it to incorporate the evidence. Some of y'all want to go in there and argue a whole bunch of stuff, and you don't need to argue this stuff. The facts is going to speak for themselves. Once you present the evidence, it's going to defeat all presumptions and assumptions of law. And I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you this in, the, in this video. That's why I'm telling you guys to get your contract game up. It's, it's, it's really not that hard. Okay, let me go here. Uh, let me show you. Circumstances, circumstantial versus direct evidence. Now we're going to get into this. Evidence comes in many forms, such as eyewitnesses, participate, participants, prior to statements by the defendant, document, physical evidence, scientific evidence, like fingerprints or DNA. No matter the form, there are two basic kinds of evidence that may be admitted in court. Direct evidence and circumstantial evidence. Direct evidence does not require... I'm going to read this for you real good. Direct evidence, direct evidence does not require any reason, reasoning or interference to arrive at the conclusion to be drawn from the evidence. Let me read that to you again. This is what the contract does. Direct evidence does not require any reasoning or interference to arrive at a conclusion to be drawn from the evidence. Do you understand contracts? When you got a contract, the contract spell out everything and both parties sign. You can't get no clearer than a contract. This is why y'all having problems. The contracts clause, and which I did in so many of my videos. Let me let me see. Do I got it pulled up here? The contract clause says the contract clause appears in the United States Constitution Article 1 Section 10 the clause prohibit a state from passing any law that impairs the obligation of a contract so if the straw man is under your contract what jurisdiction is he under yours it don't even matter what they say you got the contract Everybody is telling you all this stuff, making this stuff hard. You got the contract. You got all the evidence and weapons you need. You just don't know how to weaponize all this information. People is making this super hard. They telling you, man, this is why I comb through my state statues. This is why I so I started, I, I said, okay, I study federal, but I've been all through my state statues. The stuff is right in your face. I keep showing y'all this. Now let me go back. 
Circumstantial evidence, also called indirect evidence, requires that an interference be made between the two evidence and the conclusion to be drawn from it. A common example used to illustrate the difference between the direct and circumstantial evidence is determining whether it rained. On the one hand, if a person testified that he or she looked outside the window and saw the rain falling, that it is that is direct evidence that it rained. If on the other hand, a witness testified that he or she heard this um, distant pitter patter and later walked outside and saw that the ground was wet and smelled freshness in the air and felt that the air was moist, those um, sensations would be um, would be circumstantial evidence that it had rained. Okay, it says circumstantial evidence is often discussed as it as if it carries less weight than direct evidence. Under the law and life, that is not necessarily true. An example of demonstrate of both direct and circumstantial evidence may be uh, be equally reliable. But what I'm trying to tell you is this: direct evidence is going to be out presumptions of law. And I'm going I'm going to I'm going to show you this. Let me go here. Now I'm going to I want you to read re I want you to read this with me. Now let me see. Did I pull it up? Mm, I'm gonna show y'all this. No, I have it right here. No, that's it. That ain't it. Okay, this is it. Presumption evidence. Presumption is not considered evidence. Do you hear that? A presumption is not considered evidence. But if an opponent to a presumption puts on no evidence to rebut the presumption, the judge or jury must assume the existence of the presumption of um must presume uh, must assume the existence of the presumed fact let me read this again a presumption is not considered evidence but if an opponent to a presumption puts on no evidence to rebut the presumption the judge or jury must assume the existence of the presum presume of the presumed fact. On the other hand, if the opponent to a, pr a presumption does provide evidence to rebut the presumption, um, um, to rebut the presumption, the presumption has no further effect. Do you read? Do Do you understand this? Do you understand what I'm what I'm getting at? I'm dropping this science. It's, listen, man. We, listen, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been boots on the ground. This is why you cats ain't winning your child support cases. You ain't winning your cases because you're trying to argue elements of things that is difficult that you may not can or cannot prove. The everything boils down to evidence. At the end of the day, it's gonna all boil down to evidence. They can put in an affidavit. They can do all that stuff they want. But it got to, when you support it with evidence, and you got contracts, and you got things that you can put into place, it's going to defeat the presumption every time. You go in there and under these, and I'm going to tell you how they do it. Like, I'm going to show you all about claim of, I keep trying to tell you claim of right. Let me see what it says on here. I did, I'm tired of doing this. I did videos claim of right let me see is it a claim of right doctrine it's a tax in the in the in the tax law of the United States the claim of right doctrine calls a tax pair to recognize income if they receive the income even though they do not have a fixed right to the income everything is listen the, the banks are coming in and they're claiming the 
through acquisitions your tax credits. You're not claiming your tax credits or you're not getting your tax exemption. There's only three things you can do with a tax. You can either get a tax credit, tax exemption, or a tax debt. If they get an income, if they get an income and they're not reporting the income, they don't have no claim of right. Because if they're not claiming the income, they don't have no claim of right. That's the only way they can claim the taxes. They're getting the income. They got to report that to the IRS. So you can pull out the tax. You can get the tax records. You can have them try to do the tax records. Now, we ain't going through that. We're going to look at the tax records according to this account. This is why y'all are not winning. Y'all making this way too hard. If you got the contracts, like I said, that's why we're going to do these seminars to show you how to develop a, a legal strategy that is formatted. And it's not that simple. Now, the thing about it is, as you teach your enemy, they get better with trying to defend. And I try to tell people, as you fight your enemy, and y'all constantly fight. They they pick up these war strategies just like everybody else. That's why we coming up with this stuff. And you got to be up on it if you're going through these issues. That's why we finna do these seminars and try to get people into these workshops and get all this information out there. So contract. So I'm not making this stuff. This ain't I. This this I'm showing you. Now we're going to look at plenary power. Your contract has plenary power. Plenary means characterized by being full and complete in every respect. For example, a plenary trial is a full trial of the issues, factual and legal. Sometimes when a case is heard on appeal, the hearing is limited only to questions of law. However, the appealing judge may order the case to be sent back to the trial court to be heard again from scratch in a plenary trial in reference to legislation uh, in reference to a legislative session and, and refers to being attended or meant to attend by every member or delegate plenary authority refers to the complete power of the governing body so okay if you're the governing body like I did this before, if you're the author of the contract, if you're the author of the trust, if you're the grantor, you are the governing body. You tell the trustees what to do. They make the contracts. The contracts are owned by the trust. Listen to what I'm saying once again. Once you're the author, you give. That's what the word author come from and authorize. Authority come from the word author. Authorized come from the word author. If you is the author, you is the sovereign. You tell everybody they get all their responsibility from you. Let me let me do something. Try not to make this word make this long. Let me show you something. So, so, so. Author, the father, the creator, or one who brings about, one who makes or creates something 
I mean, someone or something. He's the originator, the creator. Is directly from light and the promoter, producer. I'm just trying to tell you the father, the builder, the trustworthy writer, authority. See that? He's the authority. One who calls to grow, an agent from Octus. I'm just trying to show you that now. Let's look at authority. Let's look at authority. I'm just going to drop this science on y'all. Authoritative passages are statement, book, or quotation that settles an argument. Right, permission, dignity, gravity, authority, prestige. What I'm trying to tell you, see author. The master, leader, or author. So if I'm if I'm the author, I'm the sovereign, I give out the authority. If I'm the person who granted the trust, the grantor, the testor, the executor, all of this stuff, I am the sovereign over the, over the, I'm the seller, I'm the seller tour. I'm seller. You got to understand those terms, I am the sovereign because I wrote the trust. I put it out. I tell people what to do. Everybody follow my lead. The trustee has to follow my authority according to the contract because I wrote it. I delegated the authority upon to him. He is under my authority. The same thing with the straw man with the contract. You the author. He has to follow your lead because he's under your contract. You, He's under your jurisdiction. Let's, let's continue. I'm just dropping this stuff down. I ain't going to make this video real long. Let me talk about privacy, right to privacy. The right to privacy is often must be balanced against the state compelling interest, including promotion of public safety and improving the quality of life. Seatbelt laws, motorcycle helmets requirements, example laws. While many Americans are quite aware of the government collection of personal information. Most say that government surveillance is acceptable. Now, let me go here. The right to prophecy, uh, privacy often means the right to personal autonomy. The Constitution guarantees you personal autonomy or a right to choose whether or not to engage in certain acts or have certain experiences. Several amendments to the U.S. Constitution have been using various degrees of success and determine a right to personal autonomy. The First Amendment protects a, 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 a privacy of belief. The Third Amendment protects the privacy of homes against um, the use of, of soldiers for housing soldiers. The Fourth Amendment protects privacy against unreasonable services. The Fifth Amendment um, protects against Self-incrimination, which in turn protects the privacy of personal information. The Ninth Amendment says the enumeration in the Constitution, certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage other rights retained by the people. This has been interpreted and justified from a broadly reading, uh, 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 a broadly reading that the Bill of Rights protect the privacy in ways not specified, pro provided in the first two, uh, first. Eight amendments. And then they talk about the 14th Amendment. But I'm going to show y'all something about this. It, anyway, I don't get into that 14th Amendment citizen. This is where it come, come, it come in. And even here it says, shall not abridge the um, immunities of the citizens. Shall not any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law nor deny any person with his jurisdiction to equal protection of the law. So, if you understand this, and you understand that you have a right to personal autonomy, and you have a right, unlimited right to contract, you got to understand what you're doing with this information, man. This stuff is it's not rocket science. I ain't going to tell you no lie. It's not rocket science.
Now, we're going to go here. I'm going to show you because I'm about done with this video. Like I said, I'm going to show you. I talked about the claim of right doctrine. You got to look this up. The first, I told you, the first definition of claim of right is tax. So you got to understand what's going on with that. That's why I said you got to get your contract game together. Now, we're going to go here under the rules of evidence. Um, the rules of evidence. We're going to talk about judicial notice uh, of adjudicated fact. This rule governs only judicial notice of adjudic adjudicated facts, the facts of the case. Ain't a contract the facts of the case? We're going to make this simple. This is why y'all having problems. Kinds of facts. A judicially notice fact must be one not subject to reasonable dispute. And is there is that, I'm sorry. A judicial notice fact must be one not subject to reasonable dispute. And that it is either a general known, generally known within the territory. Ter to, um, territorial jurisdiction of the court um, of the trial court or capable of accurate and ready determination by resorts to resources whose ac accuracy cannot reasonably be, be questioned. Now, ain't this number two capable, capable of accurate and ready determination by re resort to resources whose Accuracy cannot reasonably be questioned. Ain't that ain't that the um ain't that the contract? Ain't that the contract? And can't you use this? Also, Julie, you know within the territorial jurisdiction, because you got the straw man and you uh, created him within the jurisdiction by setting it up through your LLC. And I talk about all of that. By setting him up to other um, stuff within the state, you got to understand this information, man. And they got to give you an opportunity to be heard. It says a court shall take judicial notice when mandatory. A court shall take judicial notice if requested by a party and supplied with the necessary information. It's mandatory. They can't get around it. An opportunity to be heard. A party is entitled upon timely request, opportunity to be heard as the proprietary of taking judicial notice and the tenure of the matter notice. In the absence of prior notification, the request may be made after judicial notice has been taken. Time of taking notice. Judicial notice may be taken at any stage of the proceedings. Come on, man. This is what I'm. Listen to what I'm saying to you. Instruct the jury in civil actions or proceeding. The court shall instruct the jury to accept as conclusive any fact judicially noticed. Listen to this. This is what I'm trying to tell you. In the case of civil action proceeding, the court shall instruct the jury to accept conclusive, conclusive any fact judicially noticed. In civil cases, I ain't even gonna talk about criminal. We ain't going to even get there because this ain't what we're talking about. This is why, and like I said, let me show you this. Let me show you this. Let me show you this. That's why I keep trying to tell you. It's only one rule. Like, I'm going to show y'all this, man. I'm, listen, they try to make criminal into different than civil. Here we go. There shall be only one form of action. It shall be known as the civil action. They tell you the civil rules right here. I can break all this down from civil to criminal. I can show you how all these inter these uh, jurisdictions intertwine. I can show you how how they intertwine. I do this. I do this. I've been studying this for a long time. Like I ain't just new to this. King L Bay been around for a long time. I started off dealing in child support and developed my sense of understanding of the law. And start understanding how to deal with these people accordingly. Everything, they've been whooping you with the pen. They've been whooping your ass with that pen, man. The pen is mightier than the sword. I'm just showing you this. So let's go here. 
Let me let me show y'all this though. Let me show you this. I keep doing that. Let me show you 44.1. Judicial notice of certain law, determination of foreign law. Ain't your contract foreign law? Ain't you under, don't you, look, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Show you something. Ain't this proof of your foreign status? Ain't this proof? Hold on. Now let, let's go here. You got your 98 number. Hold on. Let me show you something. Nah. Let me show y'all this. Your WA form certificate of foreign status. This is this is your tax status right here, you form. And then you come in and you set up your other stuff through your contracts. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just dropping this. I'm just dropping this science on y'all. Ain't this evidence? Ain't this? Ain't your nine eight number? All that stuff. Once you get it set up, ain't this? And then you got your trust in, in these contracts. I'm just trying to show you how to deal with these people. Once you understand this information, I'm just dropping some science. Now I can't give you everything. I can't give you all. You know the contracts and everything. That's why, you know the sum. Seminars is so important, but I'm I'm just trying to show you this, and I'm I'm just gonna show you through the rules. Like all this stuff that I'm showing you, everything is in black and white. Like I ain't coming up with none of this information. I ain't make this up. I'm showing you. Judicial notice shall be taken of the rules of the Supreme Court of the state and of the of the decisionals. Constitution, that's where your arbitrational courts and stuff come in. Constitutionals, that's when your constitutional courts, they ain't even really got these no more. And this is your public statutory law of this state. So this is this is what you got to understand. Okay, determination of foreign law. A party who intends to rely on the, on the law of a foreign country I broke all of this down. Y'all better go back and watch. Go subscribe to my channel, Morris Universal Society of Tribes. Morris Universal Society of Tribes. I'm going to show y'all on my YouTube channel. Check out this video. Um, check out and go subscribe and check it out. A party who intends to rely on the law of a foreign country shall give notice in its pleadings or other, or other reasonable written notice to court and determine... The law of a foreign country may consider any relevant material sources, including testimony, whether or not submitted by a party. The court's determined determination shall be treated as a ruling on a question of law and shall not be made by the court and not sh shall be made by the court and not um, um, not the jury. So the court got to make this determination of this foreign law, man. You understand? The court. This is what I'm trying to tell you. you. Bring your contracts into play. Once you know really what to do, I'm telling you. And plus, with the power of understanding how to renegotiate your contracts, the stuff that we teaching and the concepts behind this, you you gonna you we we you gonna have a pretty sure victory once you understand this information. Some of this stuff that I'm, I've been trying to learn, some of this other stuff can get very complex. 
I broke it down to some simple components in which you can understand. I'm showing you everything in black and white. I ain't making none of this up. I'm just showing you how to go about dealing with this information. Starting from here. The birth certificate. It's the Ohio Department Vital Certificate. Certificate of live birth to this. This all this stuff that you got is evidence. The social security number is evidence. Your social security card is evidence. If once you understand this information, you can use it as evidence. And then you can back it up with your contracts. And once you record your administrative process, nobody gonna be able to challenge that. It's going to be proof, it's going to be evidence, it's going to be clear, and it's going to be it's, it's going to be direct evidence that can't be challenged. This is King L Bay. I'm signing off. I'm dropping this knowledge on y'all. Get with the program. This is Ghost in the System Part 6. And showing you how to defeat the system with contracts. Showing you how to beat the system with contracts. Ghost in the System Part 6. This is King L Bay. Showing everybody much love and gratitude who been showing me some love. But I'm finna drop and do this new premiere tonight on y'all. So get ready to watch this video that's coming out. Peace. Love.